Welcome everybody to apps.com, e-commerce apps for QuickBooks Online, Shopify, and Sync with PayPal. Uh, give me about a one minute because I'm going to record this session and we, the, the webinar system takes about 30 seconds or so to, to, uh, to start the actual voice recording. So we'll start in about uh, 30 seconds or so. Once again, welcome everybody, June 17th, 2015, to this episode of apps.com, e-commerce apps for QuickBooks Online. We're gonna be covering Shopify and Sync with PayPal today. So a little bit about me, my name is Hector Garcia. I work and live in Miami, Florida. I'm an advanced QuickBooks Pro advisor. I, I teach QuickBooks and in, 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 in Excel in my own classroom. I'm a member of the Training Writer Network and the Intuit uh, and the, the Into a Training Writer Network and the National Advisor Network. And I'm a co presenter for uh, QB Power Hour. Uh, I was a guest speaker at QB Connect 2014 and hope to be a guest speaker in 2015 uh, as well. And we'll talk about QB Connect towards the very end of the webinar. Our learning objectives for today is uh, sort of uh, talk about apps in general, you know, how, how apps for QuickBooks uh, engage with other systems and other platforms. So we'll talk about the apps.com website and what apps represent to the QuickBooks Online ecosystem. Uh, also, uh, you should be able to learn how, to, how, how the functionality of these specific e-commerce apps, Shopify and PayPal, will facilitate uh, better bookkeeping or faster bookkeeping and ultimately more accurate bookkeeping. So if you're an accountant, you present uh, timely financial statements. And um, the idea is also as we go through the, the, the apps and what they do, that you start thinking about the types of clients that would benefit from this. So this is whether a client already has PayPal, already has Shopify, um, or, or they don't, and, and, and think about you know, how, how these apps can, can, can help their business. So there's, there, there's a consulting opportunity for, for uh, accountants and QuickBooks consultants in terms of recommending the apps or integrating them with QuickBooks Online. So those are the, those are the learning objectives. Uh, the way CPE works is you must be in the entire webinar. So most exactly, you have to be 50 minutes in the webinar, but the webinar would be roughly about between 50 minutes to an hour. Um, there will be a CPE keyword that would be somewhere in the middle of the webinar. You have to write down that keyword, and then there will be a, a question uh, that will prompt also towards the end of the webinar. I can't give you the exact time, and you would have to answer the correct answer. This is the only way that we can have our own records that, that there was attendance during the entire time. This is why both the keyword and the question come in, come in at exactly random times. It would take roughly about three weeks to get the certificate. And you know we will send it to the same email address that's, that's logged for the webinar itself. And uh, if there's an issue getting the certificate or you haven't gotten it, there's a question about it, um, there's the email in there, accountant underscore training at intuit.com. Uh, and make sure you add that into your uh, regular inbox approved sender folders because sometimes that can go into the spam. We, we, we um, will send the, the certificate once and that's it. So you must keep it for your own records. Intuit will not have copies of the certificates uh, once they're issued. Uh, so this YouTube link that you see here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and – oh, actually, there, there is – if you look in the chat window, the PDF version of this presentation, it, it's available for download. So you can click on the link there, and then that, that's a whole hour webinar where I talk about apps and the ecosystem, and we'll go sort of in depth about how apps function. So on this particular webinar for today, we'll do a quick introduction about apps. But if you really want to understand apps and this is your first time dealing with QuickBooks apps, I recommend that particular uh, video recording. So in the context of QuickBooks, what's an app? An app, it's, it's best described as an application that is designed to do functions that QuickBooks is not necessarily designed to do. In some cases, an app will do things very similar to QuickBooks. Um, but they tend to specialize on, on transactions that are not related to core accounting. Uh, and, and some some do, right? So obviously PayPal, money coming in and money being paid, that has to do with accounting. But a lot of apps don't ha really have anything to do with accounting, but they, they do have a common denominator, like the customer name, the invoice amount, the date of the transaction and, and that sort of thing. And to avoid a double data entry, 
the idea is that the apps integrate and they download the information uh, and push it into QuickBooks or vice versa. Now, some apps are platforms, right? So by platform means that it's not an unifunctional app. It actually does a lot, a lot more things like that. Shopify is a great example of that. Shopify is a platform. Right? Shopify is a, at its core a e-commerce system, but it, it can also connect to other systems by itself. So that makes it a platform. So, so uh, you can actually use PayPal or Shopify completely separate from 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 QuickBooks. You you, you know you're not necessarily only stuck using uh, PayPal or Shopify because you use QuickBooks. So this is um th these are independent of each other. Okay, uh, all right. So why use the third-party apps? I think that's a, a fair question. The 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 question is, you know. Why do I need to use a third-party app? Why can't QuickBooks just build in this functionality, um, uh, you know, within their ecosystem or or, or be, be within their internal uh, functionality? And and the reason is that Intuit it's it's focusing and concentrating their efforts on on making a, a stable accounting platform. That's what QuickBooks does, and the idea is to focus all the energy around uh, making. It an operating system for the small business and allowing other uh, developers, other brilliant developers, you know, PayPal, you, you, you know, it's nothing short of brilliant, uh, to, to create their own platforms or their own systems that that, that clients can can uh, can use and, and and can be part of their own their own business without really uh, having to have it within QuickBooks Online because by making the the QuickBooks Online platform open. You can you can allow these brilliant applications that 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 serve the dynamic world of small business that that handle uh, uh, other types of things that is not core accounting and then you know in in sense allow QuickBooks to to transfer the information back and forth. So this is why because of the ability to do this through the cloud, Intuit doesn't have to place any focus on trying to serve every single market or, or solve for every single problem. Uh, the apps that we're going to talk about today are Sync with PayPal and Shopify. And, and, and again, the app themselves are the conduit in which the data from PayPal goes into QuickBooks or the data from Shopify goes into QuickBooks. Uh, although I'll talk about PayPal a little bit and then I'll talk about Shopify a little bit uh, you know, as their platforms, we're going to focus more about the integration and what the, what the role of the apps is um, to, to copy the information back and forth. So let's talk about e-commerce. There are many e-commerce platforms out there: Shopify, Magento, Big Cart, 3D Cart, eBay, Amazon. I mean, there's 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 probably thousands, but I'm gonna say there's hundreds. An e-commerce application it's just basically a place where a merchant, a, 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 a small business or a big business can place their product and and sell the product via the internet. Now. Some of these uh, shopping carts that you see here will have their own integrated payment systems like Amazon. Amazon uses their own payment system. Uh, Shopify has their own payment system, but they can also integrate with other payment systems like PayPal, for example. So good to, it's an example that we're going to cover here. So e the e-commerce platform itself, it's more about the shopping cart, about the website in which the clients buy, not necessarily on how they pay. Okay, so how they pay would be a merchant processor or, or a payment gateway. Okay, what the you know, PayPal? Not sure about size, but PayPal is probably one of the biggest ones when you account their worldwide uh, footprint, right? Um, yeah, there's there's certainly some really big ones like First Data, uh, Square, Stripe, Intuit Payments. Of course, I have to mention in, uh, QuickBooks Intuit Payments. Um, so these are all payment gateways or merchant processors. Sometimes they're both, and they're, these are designed to get the money into the merchant's bank account, right? So it's whatever it takes to take it away from the customer and into the business that's selling the product. That's what uh, PayPal or merchant, uh, PayPal QuickBooks payments, that's what a payment gateway or a, a processor, a merchant processor does. Now, this is not a shopping cart system. PayPal is not a shopping cart system. Um, it, it is the conduit in which people pay uh, the merchant, okay? Now, uh, before we jump into that, let's talk about, uh, something called multi-channel integration. There, there's another app worth mentioning, but we're not going to spend any details on called Webgility. I'm, I'm sure there'll be another webinar in the future about Webgility. Uh, Webgility is designed for the multi-shopping cart system, right? So if you have a, a client or you yourself are a user and you're dealing with Shopify, Amazon, eBay, 
BigCommerce, Magento, and you're, you're dealing with multiple shopping cart systems, you have multiple channels in which you sell, uh, you're probably not going to want to integrate each one, one by one, the way we're going to, we're going to talk about integrating one by one, right? So each, each channel, each uh, platform to QuickBooks one by one, you may want to use an app designed to aggregate all the information. So if, if you're looking for sort of an order manager or a place where you can see all your orders from every single place and then make decisions on what you're going to ship and stuff like that before you send it into QuickBooks, you would use uh, a multi-channel integration tool like Webgility. So we're not going to get into details about Webgility, but I want to sort of disclaim the difference between multi-channel integration and direct data integration on each particular channel. So we're going to talk about taking the Shopify data specifically and pushing it into QuickBooks or taking the PayPal data and pushing it into QuickBooks. That's the focus on today's webinar, different than having a place where everything gets aggregated uh, and then the user has one more step to take in order to go into QuickBooks. We're gonna focus on the individual data integration of each one, okay? Now, what's unique about these? And, and in the webinars, I, I almost always sort of compare them and contrast them. Unfortunately, Shopify and PayPal are not competitors in, in any way. I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, in some of the processing payments piece, they, there's a little bit of an overlap, but for the most part, PayPal, it's it's designed for something else different than Shopify is. PayPal, it's um it's almost like a bank, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say they're a bank or not a bank, because you know, PayPal is technically not a bank. Um, but it's but but PayPal is designed to receive customer payments and also make payments, right? So so PayPal is not only a merchant process or a gateway or a buy now button on your website where people can pay you. It's also a place where you can where you can make expenses. Therefore, when you sync the data. Uh, you, 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 whether you use the sync tool or the bank feeds tool that, that I'll talk about, um, the data that's being fed, you're going to expect to see both uh, income components and expense components. Uh, Shopify is different. Shopify is, is, is just a shop. It's just a, a, a shopping cart. It's just an e-commerce platform. So when you're actually downloading information from Shopify into QuickBooks, you're really only expecting to see income components, not, not any expense components, because Shopify really doesn't hold anybody's money or you can make payments with it. Um, and, and what's interesting about these two apps is that they can be used in combination. Um, I actually have an example in which I'll show you, you know, where where certain payments from, from PayPal are related to a to a sale that you made in shopping cart in, in Shopify that happened to use PayPal as the as the method of payment. So they can actually be used in combination. They, they don't they don't conflict with each other, which is actually kind of neat. Um, before I jump into PayPal, I just want to ask uh, my my fellows here uh, at Intuit: Are there any any questions or any pending comments I should cover before going into what Shopify is? <laughs> I hear sirens in the background. Um, uh, so, okay, I guess there's no questions. Wendy, Karen, no? Okay, so I'll, I'll move forward. So uh, I hear some sirens in the background, which is actually not coming from me. So I'm going to go ahead and mute all the panelists uh, unless they muted themselves. Okay, it looks like they muted themselves. Okay, so Shopify, uh, the, the, let's talk about the, the Shopify, the platform, uh, not so much Shopify, the app. Shopify, the platform, um, has different levels, right? The starter, basic, professional, limited. And this is coming from the app module inside QuickBooks Online. If you go directly to the Shopify website, th there may be some modifications in terms of what is it that, th th that they, they offer. So, you know, don't take this 100% uh, lightly. You go to shopify.com and you can see. So Shopify, it's, it's basically designed to, to, to have a service in which you can build a website. And I'm going to jump into uh, just sort of a Shopify website real quick to kind of show you. So the Shopify, Shopify website is a, it's a website in which uh, you go in there and you, you take a look at the different services that they offer, whether it's a basic, professional, unlimited, whatever it happens to be. And then once you could, you, you set up your, your, your service, basically you will have a very easy to use shopping cart system in which you can add your products and you can have a website with uh, with shopping enabled in uh, in hours i, I don't want to say in minutes you could technically have it in minutes but if you were going to sit there and upload all your products and stuff like that it it would be a question of hours which you know 10 years ago it's unheard of right you you had to pay thousands of dollars for e-commerce platform uh, nowadays with um with, with, with Shopify, it's this much easier. Now, the app itself, uh, it has to do with the sync of the information. So when you are setting up uh, the Shopify app, 
uh, the very first uh, question you're going to be asked is, okay, so whenever I have a Shopify sale, uh, where in QuickBooks am I going to put this information when I download it? So I'm going to show you. I'm going to go into my shopping uh, Shopify shopping cart here. So I'll show you. This is what the, the back end of Shopify looks like. This is uh, when you log into Shopify. And if you happen to have a Shopify uh, 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 service, you, you know what this screen looks like. Um, here on the orders, you can see all the people that have bought from you lately and how much it was and the order number. And you can click on any of these and you can actually you know, see who the customer was, the address. This is how Shopify works. I won't focus a lot on how Shopify functions, but I want to just kind of give you some background. This is the back end of, of Shopify. Just to kind of show you, my the website um, that, so this is, this is the back end, what you're seeing here. And this is the website in which, uh, this is my own website in which I sell QuickBooks. I, I happen to be a QuickBooks reseller. I'm not promoting in any way that, that you buy from me or anything like that. But what I'm saying is uh, this is a, an actual shopping cart and the experience is the user clicks on the product, they click on add to cart, and then they go through the process. They can pay with PayPal, as you see here, or they can pay through the through the built-in merchant uh, service that PayPal has. So once the user goes through and, and puts the order in, you see the order come in here in your pending orders and you can click on any of the pending orders and you can actually see who is it that bought from you and what product they bought. And, and that's basically what the whole shopping cart experience looks like. However, here under the app section, I'll show you, uh, I and, and you can have multiple types of apps connected to Shopify, but I'm gonna show you specifically the QuickBooks uh, app. So this is the, what the QuickBooks app looks like. And basically this is from the Shopify website you connect it to QuickBooks Online, and up here where it says settings, so I'll show you what that 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 was what that that screen was looking like. On the settings section, this is what I tell it. Okay, so based on my chart of accounts, and then let me go into QuickBooks real quick and just for some context, I'm gonna go into my chart of accounts. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. Let me click on chart of accounts. So so based on my QuickBooks chart of accounts, this is the, the this is the setup of Shopify. Um, I'm gonna say Whenever I have a product sale, go ahead and point it into this income account. Whenever I have a gift card sale, so this is when the client pay with the gift card, point to this liability account. And whenever the client pays me to my PayPal bank account, right? Because in QuickBooks, PayPal is a bank account. Real world, it may not, but, and then, you know, connected to this particular uh, bank account, you know, so, th th so that's what the process is. And, and all the other payments are not PayPal, send it to undeposited funds, right? So this is just, standard process of how how paypal will i mean sorry how shopify will figure out how to push information into quickbooks you set up the the, the sales tax and then it says uh, you know do i want to create a new customer or, or one generic customer and so forth and that's basically how you set up the the app then the next process is to actually choose the date range so let's say i want to download uh, all the transactions from january 1st to today and then I'll click on export Shopify orders. And then basically what, what this will do is it will take that original list of all the orders that I was showing you earlier and it will actually push them into, into QuickBooks, into QuickBooks Online. And then um, and then it, it will avoid duplications. It, it knows when things have already been entered. And then here in the bottom where it says previous exports, you can see sort of the history of, of every order I have I have exported or I have downloaded. So I'm going to go into QuickBooks and then I'm going to click here where it says customers. And then uh, basically the way Shopify works is I set it up so every customer comes in as one customer called Shopify customer. Because in this particular case, I have so many orders that I really don't want the system to create each customer one at a time. But that's what that setting was for. So if I would have gone into settings here and I would have selected uh, the little checkbox that says uh, create new customers as Shopify customers, instead of putting them on, on under one customer, it will actually create uh, one customer at a time. So it depends up to you whether or not you want to have every single customer in Quick your QuickBooks Online, or you want to have one summarized customer in there. And then what you see here, all these sales receipts, I didn't do any of these th things manually. This was my Shopify app that pushed it into my QuickBooks Online. So I'll click on one just to kind of let you know kind of how the breakdown works. And you will have all the original uh, sort of information from the customer there. And you would have the product that it was sold. 
and um, and Shopify will create the product and we'll go into the item list real quick to show you. I don't have to create the items in my QuickBooks Online. Shopify will create the items for me. So I will have detail level in my sales receipts. I will have detail level in there. Now also notice that the client paid me through the Shopify payments uh, uh, merchant system or through the payment gateway. It wasn't PayPal. So it sent the payment to undeposited funds. And uh, let me close this here real quick. And then let me open one and hopefully I'll find one that has PayPal. Hopefully I don't have to click. Okay, that's perfect. So then, then we have this other customer that actually paid me through PayPal. And notice this doesn't go to undeposited funds. This goes straight into my PayPal bank or what, what QuickBooks calls uh, your your PayPal bank. And so you kind of see how uh, the two types of payments can just affect the way that sales receipt looks like. So what you're seeing here is exactly what gets pushed from Shopify into, into QuickBooks. Um, let me go back to the PowerPoint slide here and I'll cover the next couple of slides. So this is the setting I was talking about, about creating one single customer called Shopify customers. This is the date range in terms of what I will choose to push into QuickBooks Online. And this is what the screen looks like with the sales receipt, which I already shown you through the demonstration. <clears throat> and then you, you get to see that there's an item being created and where the money, the payment is going to. And, and if there happens to be a PayPal one, you will actually have your PayPal goes straight into your PayPal bank account or your QuickBooks bank account anyway. Um, and then you can also obviously pull reports uh, in QuickBooks Online uh, and you can break it down based on, you know, was this a Shopify payments uh, transaction or was this a PayPal transaction? And you can actually uh, see them all, all in detail. So this is what it will look like in QuickBooks Online. And then uh, the very last piece here is the bank deposit. So I'm gonna, let me go over to uh, QuickBooks Online here. So if you remember, um, whenever you uh, receive uh, payments through your PayPal merchant, okay, not, sorry, not, not PayPal, Shopify merchant, uh, all those monies are going to be uh, bundled up and they eventually get deposited into the bank. So if you are an actual Shopify user, you know exactly how that works. You get an email from Shopify saying, hey, you're going to get paid uh, and then you get paid the net amount. So what ends up happening is Whenever that payment comes into the bank, then I have to do one more step here, which is the bank deposit. And then through the bank deposit, this is where I'll choose um, all the Shopify payments in this case. So let's say you know, there's a whole bunch here. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick all the Shopify payments and I'll, I'll select them here. And then uh, at the end of the day, my bank will have 359, but, but, but it would be net of the fee. So I would have to make sure that at the very end, I add my merchant fee, whatever. Let's just have one called uh, Shopify fee. Uh, and, and the important piece here is that the Shopify uh, doesn't, Shopify doesn't sync with your bank. It, it syncs with your sales receipts. Um, when the money comes into the, to the bank, you, you have to make that final step you know, for your bank reconciliation of, of making sure that whatever the fee is um, gets, gets discounted from there. And, and that's the actual money that goes into the bank. Because when you go into each specific sales receipt, uh, and I'll kind of show you, I'll exit without saving, the sales receipt doesn't contain uh, the PayPal fee. I mean, the sorry, the Shopify fee. And, and, and PayPal works a little bit different, so I'll kind of show you. So when we switch over to PayPal, I'll show you the whole PayPal PayPal scene, but that's that's in a nutshell how the integration works. So, if it's a Shopify payment, um, you're gonna get and you're gonna see uh, the, the all, everything coming to your undeposited funds, and you have to make one that one last transaction, which is match it up with the actual money that came into the bank. Okay, this is the CPE keyword for today, so make sure you write it down, Salamander. And then while I'm going to leave the CPE keyword for about a minute, and I'd like to see if there are any questions uh, for now. So to my Intuit team helping me out, are there any questions I need to answer for the time being? Good morning, Hector. There's no questions so far. Okay. I do see if somebody says, are there demos available to test these apps before offering to the client? So uh, let me answer that one real quick. So I happen to be a Shopify user and I happen to be a PayPal user. And I'm actually using my own to, to show you because I'm very familiar with the transactions. Um, you could always set up a, a QuickBooks Online account for free, 30-day trial, uh, which is exactly what I did here. So that's one, one place you can test. However, what I don't know is, and I'll ask, I'll ask Shopify first, is there a, a, a demo Shopify account 
that people can sync it so they can actually experience it with you know with fake transactions into maybe a, a, a own, their own QBO account. So I'll ask that to my uh, the, the reps from Shopify here, and then if they want to text text it privately or just jump in, I will go ahead and and, and answer that. Uh, hi guys, yeah, it's Nico from Shopify here. Just to answer that question, um, it is possible to set up a free trial account with Shopify. Um, our standard free trial is actually normally 14 days. So if you just go to Shopify.com and sign up for a trial there, you can um, play around with an account for 14 days for free. Uh, but actually, if you go to Shopify.com slash QuickBooks, um, through that page, because we're uh, working in partnership with Intuit, we do actually offer a 30-day free trial. So you can get a month for free. Okay, so that's... Uh... Shopify.com slash QuickBooks. And um, the, the, the question was, I think, a little bit more around um, because even if you set up a free, a very important piece, even if you set up a free account through here, there will not be any products loaded in there. So the user still has to create some products and, and create some, some transactions in order to be able to do any sort of sync, correct? That's correct, yeah. You can actually put your own test orders in there to see if it syncs. Um, but it doesn't pre-populate with any products. You can just kind of create a handful yourself and then put, put through some test transactions to see if okay. they pull through. All right. Th thank you. I appreciate it. So, so that was the that was the clarification about um, that that question that was asked regarding of how I would do some some sort of test. The other per I have seen another person that that is saying um, is saying does Shopify automatically transfer the money into your bank or do you have to request a withdrawal like PayPal? And, and Kathy, the answer to that is uh, Shopify. It's it's set up already that as soon as the payments settle, you know, from their internal Shopify payment system, as soon as the payments settle, they're going to be pushed into your bank, and they're going to be grouped based on day. So, so all the payments from Monday are going to be grouped, and maybe you'll get them by Thursday. And I don't want to make any claims in terms of how many days it takes, because um, how long you've been a merchant for, and how many chargebacks and all that stuff can affect the time until you get paid. But, but that, it will typically be about two to three days and it automatically pushes into your bank account. You don't have to request uh, the money. Um, then the other question, the other question is, uh, I, I missed, I missed some, but I'm wondering how do you reconcile the individual payments with the bank deposit? And that, that, that was the demonstration I was showing earlier that when, and I want to go back into QuickBooks here, what happens is when, when, when you get paid through Shopify, uh, let's say I got three orders in one day. Uh, a couple of days later, you're going to get a bank deposit that's going to bundle all the three payments and it's also going to uh, charge a net of the fee. So uh, the, 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 this last step is important to keep in mind. The last step is you go into QuickBooks and you go to make deposit and then you find the transactions are all common to the same day. So let's say that, for example, this order for the 25th here, let's say these three orders on the 25th and, and the 26th, let's say this happens to be a weekend, these will all be bundled into one lump sum deposit deposit um, of let's say 193.50 so then you would have to come in here and put the you know whatever the merchant uh, fee account that you have shopify fee and then you would have to deduct the six dollars right wh whatever the fee happens to be to make sure that this amount uh, eventually uh, synchronizes with your bank so this is not an automated process this is still a manual process shopify doesn't push any information into your bank and does not push any information about fees. It only push the gross amount of the sales receipt. So that's to clarify that question about uh, doing that. Um, somebody's asking about how long it takes to do a settlement. My account takes two to three days, but it, it, it should be different each time because it depends on, on the industry. And, 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 and I'm not sure if we are uh, if I'm allowed to just give a give a couple of days, just because it may change. Then somebody's asking how much the Shopify charge per transaction. So I'll just ask that person to just log into the Shopify website and take a look at the fees in here, the credit card rates, because I don't want to give a rate. This is being recorded, and rates tend to fluctuate. So um, so just go to Shopify.com and go to pricing, and then you you'll actually see 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 that. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to move on to, if there's no more questions, I'm going to move on to Shopify. So are there any more questions that, that, that you guys see that I didn't cover? Okay. So Salamander is the CPE keyword. Make sure that you write that down because, um, you know, towards the end, when we ask the question, this is going to be uh, part of the part of the, 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 the question that we're going to ask. So make sure you have it. Salamander is the CPE keyword going once, going twice, Sold. Okay, so let's talk about uh, sync with PayPal. 
um, Sync with PayPal is a it's a relatively new app. Um, not sure how old Shopify is, but uh, and it's really really neat because it it solves uh, direct data integration issues. Uh, pay- PayPal tends to be a little bit um, uh, difficult for a lot of bookkeepers to understand because since PayPal is not a traditional bank, they don't have the bank statements don't look like bank like uh, you know brick and mortar bank statements. So so it makes it a little bit more difficult to understand exactly what's happening. Um, so Sync with PayPal is is designed to 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 get rid of that pain point. Okay, but let's talk about what role PayPal has in your accounting. And and the big question is, it's PayPal a bank or do we treat PayPal like a bank? So although PayPal is not traditional brick and mortar bank, it it it, it process uh, incoming payments, uh, which are in turn sort of deposited into the into your PayPal balance. It's not necessarily a deposit just because of how PayPal is structured legally, but it is a payment that that gets that gets added to your balance. And then um, tons of vendors accept payments through PayPal, so you can use in turn that same uh, customer payment balance to pay your own expenses or or, or purchases or whatever. Uh, and and then that nets from your available balance that you can eventually transfer into your actual bank account. Now, PayPal data integration, which means PayPal transactions. They can be fed into QuickBooks in two ways. Uh, One, through the traditional bank feeds, which is how other bank accounts uh, uh, push the data, and also through the Sync with PayPal app. But to give you some context, I'm actually going to show you bank feeds as well, because I think it's important to look at both. And they're supposed to be uh, not used in combination, because it'll create a lot of confusion. So you'll either use bank feeds or you will use Sync with PayPal. So it really depends on on how how you're going to manage this information and how it best fits your particular business model. Either way, whether you use bank feeds or sync with PayPal, the idea is that at the end you reconcile it, right? That you reconcile it just like a bank account or just like a credit card. And and the purpose of feeding the information is to help you do most of the work uh, when it comes to um, uh, reconciling it. So we'll talk about bank feeds versus sync with PayPal for a second. So I'll start with bank feeds. So bank feeds is um, when you go into connecting your bank account or your credit card account into QuickBooks. PayPal is actually one of those choices. So if you are on this screen here uh, and you're trying to use the pay- sync with PayPal account, just remember that's not what we're doing. What what you're seeing on this screen here is a bank feed. And, and that's not the, the purpose of this webinar is to show you the sync app. So I want to show you how bank feed works so you know exactly where you are if you happen to be experimenting with it now or trying to set this up. So if you are looking at this screen to set it up and finally you're looking at a screen like this, this is not the sync with PayPal app. This is bank feeds. Okay. And the big difference between uh, the, the app and the bank feeds, the biggest difference is that with bank feeds, the incoming monies come net. So for example, that, that transaction there that you see Robert Tell, Robert Tell actually paid us $199.95 and the invoice is $199.95. And when Robert Tell asked me for an invoice, it would be $199.95. But the money that came into the bank was $193.85. So the PayPal sync skips the step of breaking down the gross amount and the net amount and they just show you the net amount. Now, if you if you don't care accounting wise about breaking these two things down, then maybe bank feeds could work for you. And you can you can add that and put it into your into your net sales or whatever. But that is that is the significant difference between bank feeds and the PayPal sync. The other significant difference is when expenses come in through the bank feeds, you have the opportunity to use the traditional QuickBooks rules, the banking rules to choose you know, what vendor should be what account. Uh, whereas with the PayPal sync account, everything comes in under uncategorized and you have to go back after the fact and reclassify them. So it's sort of a, a difference in that workflow. So if your screen looks like this, when you're actually on the sync with PayPal app, that means you're you're using the correct app. You're using the app that we're showcasing on this on this webinar, not not the other screens. If you look at this screen, that means that the sync it's happening with the actual new app that we're talking about. And you will get an authorization question from QuickBooks is asking you, are you sure QuickBooks can sync information with PayPal? And then right after you will get the authorization question with PayPal, 
where PayPal is asking, wait a second, are you sure you want me to share information with Intuit? So if you get this double authorization process, that means you're using the sync with PayPal app correctly, the one that we're, that we're going to showcase here. Then the next step is to do the actual setup. And, and just like um, just like the, the Shopify app, you do have to do uh, the chart of account setup where you have to say, hey, which, which accounts should map to what? Um, and, um, and I'm going to show you that in the demonstration so you can see exactly what the screen looks like. Um, and basically, after you, you set up all the uh, mapping of the chart of accounts, just like the Shopify app, this is where they're very similar, actually. Uh, you get to choose the date range of the transactions, and then uh, they actually push into your QuickBooks, and it goes straight into your bank register. So how this is significantly different than bank feeds is that bank feeds puts it on a on a on a on a layer where you still have to classify things right and you can use the rules whereas this one doesn't it pushes it straight into your PayPal register making it really easy for you to eventually reconcile but as you can see from this screenshot all the expenses are on categorized expenses so there's no way to to tell PayPal hey PayPal when when it's vendor A put it on this category when it's vendor B, put it in that category. So the PayPal sync places a lot of the value on syncing monies coming in, not so much of classifying money out. Whereas the bank feed, and I'll go back here to the screen with the bank feed, where bank feed places more value, though not much detail on the money coming in, but uh, that gives you the ability to classify things using the, the rules, which is a great feature of QuickBooks for money coming out. So you, you can't use both. It's, it's one or the other. If you use both, you're going to create this whole mess. Okay, so, so you just use one or the other. And, um, and by the way, maybe both could work. I just haven't figured out how to, how to get it to work without making a mess anyway. Um, you know, maybe with matching or something, I would have to maybe do some experimentation. But I would only recommend that you use one or the other. Um, so Sync with PayPal is, is mostly focused about downloading uh, monies coming in. Uh, and um, basically, I want to jump into the PayPal website real quick to kind of give you some familiarity. Uh, because of a comment I said earlier of how important it is to reconcile the bank account. And so I'm going to uh, switch over here to my PayPal account. And I may have to log in again. I may have timed out here. So let me log in again one more time. And there's there's my PayPal email. So if you want to contribute to the cost and send me some money, uh, I would <laughs> So I'm, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, so basically, uh, here on the history section and on the reports, I can pull up um, something that kind of looks like a bank statement. And again, I'm guessing because PayPal is not a traditional bank, they're not, they don't call it a bank statement. So it's called monthly financial summary. And, and I'll pu pull up any of these months, let's say May, for example. And then when I pull up this financial summary, I'm going to get that similar behavior of beginning balance and ending balance. Let me use a month that maybe has uh, some numbers here because I, I tend to just clear out those balances almost every month here. So let me see. Okay, there we go. So this one, for example, has a, has a beginning balance of uh, $14.35.01 uh, and an ending balance of $0. So when I go into QuickBooks Online, the purpose of the PayPal sync, and let me go into QuickBooks Online, and I'm going to go into my bank register. I've already done all the sync already to kind of do the demonstration. So I'm going to go into my chart of accounts here and then go into my bank register that I set up for this. I'm going to go to view register. And this is exactly how the information from PayPal pushes into QuickBooks. So, for example, I have a, I have a sale coming in. Uh, let me see that sale right here, whatever this one. There's a sale, sale coming in. I'll click on edit here to so show you. And this is somebody paid me, right? This Chris Luke, whoever this happens to be, maybe a person from FastSpring, paid me this this amount, and and QuickBooks created a sales receipt during the sync process, um, and basically it saved me the time of putting the customer name, and putting what it was. Now, unfortunately, um, it won't break down the items for you, so it'll just be like PayPal. It'll just be a, a, a regular item called PayPal item. So if I wanted to go back and and put some detail in it, I would have to put the detail in there. Um, but but this got pushed from PayPal into QuickBooks. I didn't write this down. I right? reference number, none of this stuff I did manually. This, this this got pushed into it. If you look at some of the expenses, for example, let me open this one. This was a Microsoft. I must have paid for, I don't know, a subscription of Office or something like that. Um, so yeah, there it is, Office 365 University. Um, so for example, this I paid this with my PayPal account. 
Um, I didn't put this manually in QuickBooks. Everything came in here, who my vendor was, the description of what I paid for the amount. I do still have to change that categorization in there. Um, if you happen to be an accountant, uh, you know that uh, QuickBooks Online Accountant has a tool uh, called uh, Reclassify that, that may help you do this pretty quick. But that's one of the deficiencies that that the app has is that it will push all the transactions, which will make it great for reconciling, but it won't make it uh, so easy for classification because I have to go back and, and classify these. But I want to show you at the very end the whole purpose of of pushing the money in and, and pushing the money out directly into 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 QuickBooks is that I can do my reconcile right at the end. This is the ultimate purpose of that is when I go to uh, reconcile and I have my beginning balance and my ending balance. Let's see. Let me do a let me do a May one. I'll just show you real quick. I, I, ha I haven't entered any of this information manually. So my ending balance for May, I believe, is zero dollars. I'll click OK. I'll double click here my financial statement. Um, and I'll change this to May. And, and, and again, this is how you will be doing your own uh, PayPal reconciliations in QuickBooks after the information is pushed. Yeah, so that my ending balance is, is zero. There's some debits and some credits. So in theory, uh, I haven't tested this yet, but I, I hope it doesn't embarrass me. In theory, when I when I when I go in there and I check all my all my deposits, all my money in and my money coming out, there we go. It's perfect. So it did work. Um, the difference is zero. And basically, the the reconciliation of the PayPal account happens pretty much automatically. So that's the the great beauty of using the PayPal app to push data straight into QuickBooks. Is I don't I never have to do any manual data entry. It all gets pushed in there. Uh, the only draw and, and it gets reconciled. The only drawback is I have to reclassify the transactions that that were expenses that i would have to manually go in there and and classify so that's sort of the ultimate purpose of using uh shopify um I'm sorry uh paypal sync the the sync with paypal app to push the data and finally reconcile it now something uh, a lot of people don't know from paypal so i'll kind of show you take advantage that I'm on the PayPal account here is that there's a little button here called view details. And if you click on that, on that view details um, button, you, you get uh, something, again, something similar that, as a bank statement where you actually get all the debits and the credits and you see the breakdown of the gross amount and the, and the net amount. And again, this is a PayPal thing, not a QuickBooks thing, but, um, but PayPal does give you a little bit of that uh, sort of bank statement, debits and credits feel. It doesn't look exactly like it, but it, but it, the ultimate purpose is that you could manually reconcile these transaction by transaction if you needed to. However, as I showed you, um, I didn't touch anything in, in QuickBooks. I just hit the push button and, I, and I'm able to reconcile it with one click. So you shouldn't have to do it manually, but but if, if as a user, you happen to sit there and, and click on, on uh, and create transactions, you may have to do a, a manual processing of that reconciliation after the fact. Okay, so I'm going to click here, finish now, and then basically reconciles uh, just okay. Okay, so that's the reconciliation process in, uh, in in PayPal after the information gets pushed. Now let me um, let me do the, the the final sort of assessment about the difference between using the bank feeds and, and the sync with PayPal app. So with the sync with PayPal app, uh, all transactions go straight into the register. Uh, merchant fees are separate. And um, it's mostly useful when uh, sales receipts are not previously created into QuickBooks and you want to push that information without having it to type it in there. Um, <clears throat> bank feeds uh, downloads all the transactions into the downloaded transactions menu or, or the bank feeds menu, which then you have to push one by one. Uh, you can use the renaming rules you know, to categorize things for you or to match previously created tools. So if you are creating the invoices in QuickBooks before um, you're, you're bringing the PayPal uh, download because you happen to be doing inventory control or for whatever reason you do the invoice in QuickBooks before you push it in there. And then you can use PayPal bank feeds just to match them. And that's when it's useful. The only challenge I have here is that it's, it's downloaded as a net sales. So the fees are deducted from the deposited amount, which will require you to put that fee inside of the invoice or the sales receipt, which I'm not sure if that could cause a problem in terms of presenting it to your client later on and, 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 and uh, something like that. So I want to, uh, since, since I didn't spend any time on the bank feeds portion, let me just, for contrast, 
show you bank feeds with PayPal. So I'm going to go into transactions banking. And this is different. Again, this is different than the sync system. This is with the bank feed system. And notice that this particular deposit here, 193.85, this is coming net of the fee. And it's not being pushed into my bank register. I actually have to say, okay, this customer is this category and click on add, right? And then what happens is, uh, and I'm going to show you in contrast, I'm going to go into uh, customers here. I'm going to go into Shopify customer. And then uh, somewhere around here, I think it's maybe this one. Uh, it's, it's probably this one because that was my latest sale. Um, so this one, for example, this one, the real amount was one one ninety nine ninety five, and PayPal Sync brings it as a gross amount because that difference between the one ninety nine ninety five and the one ninety three is going to be manifested inside of my register. So I'm going to go into my chart of accounts here, and I go into my Sync, and I created one bank account for the feeds and one for the Sync, so I can just kind of demonstrate the two. So I'm going to go here into the sync register uh, and I'm going to show you how that fee came in separate. So uh, there's my, so there is my gross amount that got downloaded and then there's my fee. Now what's nice about it is the PayPal fees, those get classified. Okay. That's because let me go into the app here and show you the, the settings of the PayPal fee because you actually, the only expense that gets classified with a sync app is the is the, the the PayPal fee itself? Um, everything else comes in as that uncategorized uh, amount. So while I click on this, and and we're almost at the top of the hour, while I click on this, I'll ask uh, my Intuit colleagues to um to to let me know. Are there any questions that I should address? So there's a question for um, the monitors here. Intuit, are there any questions you think I should be addressing? Okay, they're muted somehow. Let me see. Uh, what about shipping cost? <laughs> okay, so um, so PayPal Sync, the Sync with PayPal doesn't split shipping and gross sale amount. It just comes as one lump sum account. Uh, let me see uh, there. Uh, how much does Shopify charge per transaction? I already said go to the Shopify website. Uh, PayPal creates a new customer. Okay, so that's, a, that's an interesting one too. Um, when PayPal does the Sync, and I'll show you when PayPal does the sync, the new customer is actually created or, or the vendor is actually created. Um, and let me go to vendors here to show you. So all the vendors are created as emails in this case, right? So when, when I download expenses through PayPal sync, all my vendors are created uh, through the email address. Okay, because that's, that's how it does it. So you have, kind of have to think about, you know, is this going to work for you, <laughs> right? Um, but when... Um, when Shopify downloads it, you, you have the option of not doing that and just having one lump uh, customer called Shopify customer. So that was the, the, the comment that somebody said is, um, you know, is it, is it possible for create to, so the question that they're asking here, is it possible for PayPal to just create one lump sum customer? And I have not figured out if that um, functionality is in there. So for the PayPal people that are on the webinar listening, you know, that could be a, a useful piece, you know, where, where people are asking, actually wanting the option of, of clicking a, a button and say, you know what, I, I really don't want um, to, let me just go into the settings here. I'll, let me answer that by going into the settings. So I don't think I saw, uh, and this is the PayPal, sync with PayPal settings. I don't think I saw the option to, uh, let me go to app settings, to avoid creating a customer each time. Uh, no. Okay. Actually, yeah. Um, it, it sounds like, it sounds like uh, I made a mistake here. So down here on the option, it says PayPal customer, and then it says all the details. So, uh, uh probably, and I haven't tried it probably is this option here called do not track that that is likely to be the one that if I choose do not track, uh, it'll just, it'll just do one customer with no detail. So that's, that's likely to be the one I, I haven't tested it yet, but that, that is likely to answer that question that that person from the, from the, from the webinar asked is, you know, is there an option to do that? Um, okay. The other question is, does PayPal break down sales tax? The answer is yes. So that's that, that area. If you, if you go through the settings here, you can actually see that you have a different chart of accounts account for, so for sales tax. So yes, sales tax is one of the uh, items that do get broken down, but that that's that that's about it. Um, that's about it. Let me see. 
uh, how do I get sales tax info into QBO? That so I just answered that question. All right, so I'm done reading reading the questions. Um, so I'll ask my Intuit person one more time. Um, are there any other questions that I should address before I jump into the outro, uh, the conclusion? No. Okay. So it sounds like there's no question. Okay. So let's talk about the the what I call the consultants opportunity. So if you happen to be an accountant that manages multiple clients or a QuickBooks consultant, uh, what what is the opportunity here? So one of the opportunities is if you have a client that has a unique product that they should be selling online, and and they don't want to get into e-commerce because it's too expensive or too complicated. Because e-commerce has this huge stigma of like, oh my God, it's just so much programming and so expensive. Shopify, you know, I, I'm not a programmer at all. I, I built my shopping cart, my Shopify shopping cart in, in a question of hours, and I maintain it and I still run it. And granted, I only have maybe 10 sales a week, but um, but it's very easy to use platform. So as a consultant, you can actually enable some of your clients that that I want to get online in terms of selling their product. And uh, Shopify makes it so much easier. Now, in terms of PayPal, you know, where I've seen a lot of success with with PayPal is it's people selling internationally. You know, one of the one of the very difficult things about selling internationally is finding a way to get paid. You know, a lot of international clients have credit cards that would just not go through in in your standard U.S. merchants, or 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 they they uh, or they present a lot of risk, or um, or for whatever reason the customer doesn't have doesn't really have credit cards because in that country they don't manage credit cards. So PayPal has been very successful for international e-commerce. I mean, not just that, you know, just in U.S. commerce, I know that when I'm shopping around on a website, I know when I see that, when I see that PayPal button in there, I am more, more likely to buy because when I click on the PayPal button, I just log in and that's it. When I click on buy now and I have to take out my wallet and pick and put my credit card number, something about, in my opinion, my opinion, uh, something about the the psychology of of taking out your credit card, it feels like it costs more than just logging in and, and clicking on the PayPal. So I think that um, as a merchant, you would sell more because of that particularity. You would sell more uh, with PayPal because a lot of clients just prefer to buy through PayPal. And also, uh, the, the, the most important consultant opportunity here is avoid double data entry. So so if you have a lot of transactions. Um, you know, bring them with PayPal Sync. You know, if you're not really using uh, inventory or anything like that, just just push them all through PayPal Sync. I know I have a client that that sells uh, ten dollar subscriptions to to some website about um, some videos. That he teaches people how to I don't know how to comb their hair or something, uh, and people are paying ten dollars a month. Uh, you know, for 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 to watch these videos, and and he doesn't want to sit there and, and create an invoice for ten dollars times a hundred clients. Uh, every single month, this sync with PayPal just works wonderful for them. So I think that that is the the true consultant's opportunity of not only just learning these two apps, um, you know, just just using them yourself or encouraging your clients uh, to use it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to the apps.com website real quick. So I'm gonna sort of so uh, I'm done with that. And again, into a reps. If there are any things I didn't answer, any questions that you have to. Um, that I have to answer, just just let me know and just interrupt me real quick. So I'm going to show you the apps.com website because if you have not visited the apps.com website in a while, I strongly recommend that you do. As a matter of fact, um, let me do a polling question real quick. And we're almost done with the webinar. So I just like to know how, how many people have visited the apps.com website to see if it's worth it for me to um, show it a little bit. And and, and if you haven't, and yeah, it's about 50-50. <laughs> um, if, if you haven't, you know, Check it out because you'll be surprised on on, on how how fast the third party app market has grown and, and how important the third party app market is to the QuickBooks ecosystem. Um, because uh, Intuit it's growing in terms of the client base and more and more small businesses and even even smaller businesses are moving into QuickBooks and some larger businesses are working into QuickBooks. So so no longer QuickBooks is only for one particular set of small businesses. Now some of the really small ones, self-employed, and some of the larger ones are moving into QuickBooks specifically because of the, the third-party marketplace, because um, you've been able to sync uh, CRM apps, obviously PayPal apps. You're able to sync uh, so many so many different things that people didn't really think about using QuickBooks before, but they were using other apps 
Um, and, and now they're being encouraged to use QuickBooks because there's no double data entry. So if you, I'm going here, this is what the apps that come with. Look at all these apps that are here. There, there's hundreds of apps in here, obviously including Shopify, obviously including uh, PayPal. There's hundreds of apps here. Uh, T-Sheets being one of the more popular ones. Uh, Transaction Pro Importer, very popular one. Um, Method CRM, other popular ones. So strongly recommend to check out the apps.com website. The apps are a very strong part of the Intuit ecosystem. Okay, let me put the polling question up and the polling question for the CPE. And um, and again, while you put that in there, I'll ask the Intuit reps again, are there any questions? And I'll ask you to respond this time so I know that you're hearing me. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, is there, a, if I'm from Intuit, uh, are there any more questions that I th you think I should cover? Hector, we we had one in regards to um, does this run on QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, and um, sync with PayPal, and I believe Shopify are for QuickBooks Online. That is correct. So the the specific apps that I shown today are only QuickBooks Online. Now that does not mean that there are third party developers that created a PayPal to QuickBooks Desktop sync. There is there is in fact. Um, those or a Shopify to QuickBooks Desktop. By the way, the Shopify one, not 100% sure about, but I'm sure, I think I, I read about one. Um, I actually myself use QuickBooks Desktop for my practice, and I use Shopify, and I don't sync them uh, because because we manage inventory, and I really don't want that information to be pushed. So I actually end up manually putting them in, in, in my QuickBooks file. I just reconcile them uh, with that. So I, I haven't used uh, one for desktop yet, and I, I don't because of the volume. I really don't mind it, but there are there's a, a there's a big company. Let me just pull it up here. Let me finish the the polling question, and I'm gonna. So for the people that want their CPE, I will give you 10 more seconds to put the polling question, uh, the polling answer there, please. So going once, going twice. Okay. So last time to put your polling question, I need to put the polling answer. Thank you. So if you want your CPE, put your polling answer. Thank you. I'll close it. Perfect. So um, there's a, a so Webgility is one of them. Um, so I showed the, I showed it earlier, and it, it, this webinar is not designed to talk about uh, this one to talk about Webgility, but Webgility makes a desktop product that works with Pro, Premiere, Enterprise, and it's a, it's a monthly subscription, and that one can bring multi-channel sales and not just Shopify. It can bring multi-channel sales. Another big one. Uh, it, it's called T Hub, um, and that T-Hub, I think it doesn't do QuickBooks Online. It's just QuickBooks Desktop. So these are the sort of the two big developers that I know, and there, there may be more, uh, and I'm only endorsing these two because I've, I've used them, uh, that actually sync multiple channels, including uh, Shopify and stuff like that, with uh, QuickBooks Desktop. Um, what about any other, any other question? Was that the only question, or was there another one that I didn't answer? Okay, I guess not. Okay, so the very last thing I'll tell you is um, November 2nd to the 4th in 2015, San Jose, California, Intuit will have a second QuickBooks Connect event. The first QuickBooks Connect event, event was, was incredible. There was food, there was drinks, there was live music, there was tons of learning for accountants. Um, it, they, we, we, I heard some Intuit executives actually mention that they may sell out this year because of the, the amount of, uh, of interest there, there is for it. Um, if you want to go, if you're a QuickBooks fan, whether you're a user, an accountant, a consultant, a developer, you got to make it to this event. It's, it's tons of fun. It's, it's relatively inexpensive for everything you get against it. And it's just basically an all QuickBooks event. So hope to see you in, in November for that. Um, anyway, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I think there's no more questions. Thank you very much for attending today. Hope that uh, you're able to work with PayPal and Shopify and make uh, your life easier in terms of data entry. Thanks again, and you guys have a wonderful day.